Welcome to this overview of CLSI document C64, Quantitative Measurement of Proteins and Peptides by Mass Spectrometry, 1st edition. This guideline provides broad recommendations for appropriately developing and validating quantitative protein and peptide assays for clinical applications using electrospray liquid chromatography mass spectrometry and liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry techniques. C64 is practically focused and includes workflow overviews and experimental strategies for developing and validating quantitative assays for soluble proteins and peptides in biofluids. This guideline focuses on liquid chromatography and electrospray ionization coupled with tandem mass spectrometry because of the wide availability and proven utility of this method. The measure in describes the analyte, which is the component or constituent having a measurable property. It is the required first step for developing a distinct and well-characterized measurement system that can lead to the creation of a metrologically traceable clinical test suitable for standardization or harmonization. The measure in circumscribes the biochemical and biophysical features that inform workflow selection, selection of IS and calibrator, and test development. Two distinct workflows are used for quantitative protein and peptide analysis. Intact and proteolysis aided. These workflows, colloquially known as top-down and bottom-up respectively, are fundamentally different. Intact protein quantitation workflow is straightforward and mirrors small molecule analysis. Proteolysis-aided workflow is closely related to small molecule quantitation by LCMSMS and is typically performed on instrumentation widely available in medical laboratories, i.e., triple-quadruple, QQQ, mass spectrometers. Although there is enormous diversity in instruments, quantitative protein and peptide analysis relies heavily on high-performance liquid chromatography, HPLC, ESI, and three analyzer types, i.e., quadruple, electrostatic orbital ion trap, and time of flight. Internal standards are used to control test variability arising from process variations and matrix effects between specimens and calibrators. They can be either synthetic or recombinantly expressed. Synthetic internal standard peptides are generated using solid phase chemistry, joining individual amino acids, natural or modified, in series. Expressed internal standards are proteins and peptides produced in engineered bacteria, yeasts, mammalian cell culture, or cell-free protein production systems. Sample processing requirements dictate the selection of an appropriate internal standard in a quantitative protein or peptide LCMS assay. The test developer needs to consider the quality of the peptides with respect to chemical purity, isotopic purity, and delta mass, as well as storage. Calibration is required for all quantitative protein and peptide measurement procedures used in a clinical setting. This process provides the fundamental link between a measurand and metrology. Calibration is central to harmonization and standardization and should be considered during test design. In the approach to calibration, the response factor is the relationship between the detector response and the number of analyte molecules initially present in a defined sample volume, i.e., analyte concentration. Calibration can be external or internal. Calibration errors arise when the response factor function represented by the calibrator system is not equivalent in the test specimen, i.e., native matrix. The ideal calibrator matrix is identical to the specimen matrix used in testing. Choosing the right calibrator is critical to ensuring the accuracy and trueness of a measurement procedure. During the planning phase of the project, the test developer considers the clinical utility and intended use of the test, as well as indications for the test, to assess the potential effect of an inaccurate test result and determine whether an inaccurate test result poses a safety risk to patients. Technical aspects to consider during the planning stages are instrumentation requirements for development and routine use of the test, expected timeline for method development and validation, test throughput, required turnaround time, sample preparation time, instrumental analysis time, and appropriate use of automation. QC samples are essential for monitoring of test performance characteristics during development and for routine analysis of patient samples after the test has been validated. After developing an initial version of the method, the test developer should perform a preliminary evaluation of test performance. The key considerations for designing high-quality validation experiments include imprecision and reproducibility. 
The goal of evaluating imprecision during validation is to assess error arising from run, day, reagent lot, instrument, and operator differences. Reproducibility experiments expand error assessment to between site and between laboratory studies. Analytical sensitivity. The lower limit of the measuring interval can be defined as the minimum analyte concentration that results in measurements with adequate accuracy and imprecision for the test's clinical purpose. Measure instability. Measure instability is validated to ensure that the error in measuring concentration, which is a function of defined specimen handling conditions, does not exceed the acceptance criteria. Reagent stability. Reagent stability is validated to demonstrate that the storage conditions and duration for reagents are adequate to meet the test's analytical performance criteria. Analytical selectivity, interferences, and matrix effects. Evaluation of analytical selectivity is a key component of method validation. Endogenous and exogenous compounds, as well as compounds generated during specimen processing, can cause interference in quantifying or qualifying ions for the measure and, and or internal standards. Carryover. The test developer should evaluate carryover potential by analyzing samples in the intended matrix with low, median, and high measure and concentrations. Accuracy, trueness, and method comparison. Evaluation of trueness, i.e., the magnitude of agreement with a reference system, is the preferred method of accuracy assessment. To evaluate accuracy, the developer should perform method comparison experiments with multiple runs over a minimum of five days. Method comparison studies should use individual native matrix samples that represent the spectrum of physiological states, both normal and pathological, expected in the intended test population. CLSI C64, Quantitative Measurement of Proteins and Peptides by Mass Spectrometry, provides a framework for developing clinical protein and peptide assays from conception to validation. This guideline is intended for those who have experience with traditional small molecule liquid chromatography mass spectrometry, LCMS, but not with protein and peptide analysis. Although closely related to traditional small molecule analysis by LCMS, Protein and peptide analysis involves unique challenges and necessitates complex workflows, which are covered in detail. To enhance translation of assays to clinical use, this guideline focuses on method development aligned with clinically appropriate analytical validation. Thank you for your interest in CLSI standards and guidelines. Please visit our website at www.clsi.org.